Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Ledoux, and I'm the Director of Hospitality and Restaurant Management at the Institute of Culinary Education. Welcome to this installment of our guest lecture series. As a reminder, this demonstration is being broadcast, so if you are watching online, please post questions to the YouTube chat. And for our students and staff here today, please wait for us to pass around the microphone so we can hear all of your questions. Our goal in this series of demos and lectures is to highlight the culinary excellence of contemporary chefs and culinary entrepreneurs. In the past few months, we have hosted Chef Michael Simarusi of the Michelin starred Providence, Steph Chef Stephanie Izard of The Girl and the Goat, Chef Meg Bickford of the historic Commander's Palace in New Orleans, and Chef Nancy Silverton of the Michelin starred Osteria Moza. Chef Dima is a culinary artist, interior designer, and devoted mother of three, known for her vibrant personality and passion for creating unforgettable dining experiences. As the chef and owner of Amatoli in downtown Long Beach, she has realized her lifelong dream of sharing her love for cooking and hospitality with her community. Growing up in Amman, Jordan, Chef Dima was immersed in the rich culinary traditions of the Levant region. Chef Dima's passion for cooking is evident in every dish she creates. She believes that food should be prepared with love and care. And this philosophy shines through in the flavors and presentations of her cuisine. Her dedication to her craft has earned her recognition. Notably, Chef Dima earned a spot as the semifinalist for the best chef in California in the 2024 James Beard Awards and has graced the LA Times 101 Best Restaurants in LA for three consecutive years, as well as being named in the Long Beach Post Hall of Fame in 2023. Please join me in welcoming Chef Dima Habibe and her daughter Masa, who just completed her pastry program at ICE and is currently in her externship at Osteria Moza. Welcome. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so, so happy to be here with you. Um, my name is Dima Habiba. I am the owner chef of Amatoli in Long Beach, California. Um, I grew up in Amman, Jordan, and then um, my, mom, my mom is Syrian from Syria and my dad is Palestinian. So when I moved to the state with my husband and kids, um, I was just so craving all the home cooked meals, my mom's uh, food, the gathering with family and friends. So I start cooking everything at home. And um, it was my dream one day to, to um, make a restaurant and open uh, a restaurant. And I love just, I love cooking and um, hosting people and friends and feeding people. <laughs> yeah, I just started like this. And I'm so grateful right now where we are. <laughs> it's really big in our culture to be very like hospitable and wanting to feed people. That's kind of how we share love and that's pretty much our biggest love language. So I think that's how I felt loved the most at home growing up. Um, we would always invite like my friends over. That was their favorite thing to come over for my mom's cooking. And especially when we moved here, when a lot of my friends weren't familiar with our food or um, it was just something new to them. So everybody was really excited for that. Yeah, that was nice. So we'll be making today one of our uh, meza dip on the menu. It's called mhammara. It's, um, it's a Syrian uh, dip, Syrian dish came, uh, originated from Aleppo. Aleppo is uh, one of the oldest city in uh, Syria. And uh, the star of the dish, uh, as you see, the bell pepper. <laughs> so we roasted the bell pepper um and then uh we peeled it and then we're gonna uh put it in the food processor to grind it with um some uh toasted walnut is there anybody allergic to walnuts yeah just <laughs> so this is one of my favorite dips i when i when we're work, like at work I always crave different things for like a week straight and then I'll just eat the same dish for like every day. 
And this has been like on the list. Yeah, recently. basically every day. She eat it every day. <laughs> and this dish, you can enjoy it with uh, carrots, uh, cucumber, or pita. Or some maybe like uh, uh, some grilled kebab, mashawi, chicken, or beef, or lamb. It goes very well with a lot of uh, things. In the uh, fat based program, we do it with a tofu fish. So we make so we can the fish, but we do it more well. Oh, nice. It's super versatile. Interesting. Can you uh, start the food process? Set? Any questions? I know maybe like all of you like different levels or not sure if all of you like uh, baking bakers or, <laughs> or like what type of uh, classes. Um, are you familiar with our cuisine? Anyone like love to ask anything about our cuisine? <laughs> so this is a Levantine cuisine, which is typically like a part of the Middle East. That's the Levant region. The Middle East is really huge and there's a lot of different parts of it. There's kind of like the Gulf area, which is where the UAE, Dubai, Qatar, Saudi is. And then there's the Levant region, which is where we're from, which is Jordan, Syria, Palestine and Lebanon. Uh, every region of the Middle East has, you know, cultural differences, slight cultural differences and uh, unique differences with food. So for us, typically we make food very similarly in that region. Like slight differences would be like how much lemon you would add to a certain dish or like slight differences in um, spices. But it's typically just the same type of food in the entire Levant region. A lot of people don't really know about the Le like Levantine food, so it's really fun to introduce people that come visit about the region. Because a lot of times it's always just like Mediterranean food, which is not wrong, but the Mediterranean is also really big. So it's nice to introduce people to a different cuisine. So now we're going to roast the bell pepper with garlic. We roasted also the garlic in the oven. Chef Dima, how did you get started with your restaurant in Long Beach? Can you give us a little bit of background into um, the design, which is beautiful? I've been there. Thank you. <laughs> so I studied, I was like very like home uh, at home with my kids the whole time, um, take care of the kids. And um, I love design. I love, I love food. So uh, I studied interior design. But I've been always love to cook and my passion is, you know, cooking and feeding people. And um, so I, I think it took me like two, two to three years um, to plan for the restaurant and looking for location. It's not that easy. <laughs> and um, I just loved Long Beach because it was like in the middle between uh, Orange County and L.A., and uh, yeah, I found the, the, the location and I just fell in love with the area and the street. And I liked it because it was like just brand new empty, empty box. So, and I, I like to, I want to design it from scratch. So I built it, everything was built in from scratch, plumbing, electricity, the kitchen design, the interior design. So it was fun, but a lot of tears, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stress. It's not easy, but it was, was, was so much fun to do it. Yeah. What, what was the time frame from the build out to actually opening? Around a year. Around a year. A year, yeah. That's before the COVID. Now I yeah. believe it's taking even more than that. Wow. Yeah. 
Because now we're in the process, uh, we're opening a private dining room. So it's, it's taking a long time. <laughs> it's taking, yeah. Because we opened our original location, which was the, the it was kind of like in between a burger place and the Long Beach like Design Center. And then um, we, it was about a, a year and a little over before COVID hit. We opened July of 2018. And then first year pretty much doesn't count for a restaurant because I feel like you're just starting to figure everything out. And we started small. Yeah. It was and then we grew pretty, pretty small. Yeah, and then we expanded. A little bit after COVID, the burger place, the burger place went out of business before COVID hit. But so the space was just sitting vacant. And then we had, the, there were some new, there was a new landlord and we just, they'd asked us to take over the place and it was a good time for us. So we decided to expand. Side we door. had a chance to open a second location, but it wasn't my ideal idea. Mm -hmm. I I said no. <laughs> I would rather I, I prefer to be in the one location, put all my energy and you know, like love and education for my, you know, like because I feel it's home. It's my home, right. my second home. I spend much time like in the restaurant more than I spend time in my home. So I I, in that time, I, I didn't see myself. I can be in both, like, two locations. So I decided just to take the, the spot next to us and expand it. So it was it was a great idea. I'm so grateful. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy I decided to do that because it would be, like, so, so hard for me to be, like, in two locations, even now. Right. Yeah. Right. And now we're expanding to the... The other side of the restaurant, uh, also, it was an empty space. Uh, it's been a lot of empty spaces around us. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah. So uh, now, yeah, now a little bit more. So we're going to have it as a private room. Because a lot of people, they request a private room, which we host a lot of private events. But it's still, like, it's nice to be, like, a, a private that's fantastic because we we speak to you know our students about you know expansion and how do you mm -hmm. bring in other streams of revenue to you know make the business okay. more successful yeah it's hard it's nice to stay uh, i like staying in one location too cuz you you uh, grow your like the community is really nice it's nice yeah. to see familiar faces come back uh with the customers and I like to go out and like say hi to everybody. So it builds more of like a relationship. I think everybody gets excited when they see my mom there. Yeah, I feel like location is very important in the community uh, because it feels like um, you you uh, you connect with the people as if like, you know, they're coming to your, I feel like they're coming to visit me at home. Like I don't feel like, you know, going to a restaurant or I want them to feel this way. I want them to feel like when I, when I, uh, built the restaurant and that was my dream I, I was I want when people visit Amatoli they feel like you know going to someone's home or transported to somewhere else you know like you know different area which I hear that's a lot from our guests like they always compliment like oh I feel like I'm in Greece I feel like I'm in Lebanon I feel like I'm you know it uh, like the, the whole ambience the the design the music it's the food, it's just, and this all, it's always brings them back, you know, like it's, it's not only about the food, it's the whole, you know, the experience. 100%. Yeah. And did you bring a lot of the decor from Jordan? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of the design, just how we built our homes back home. Like it's a, the, the stone um, from Jordan, that's a, it's called like limestone. We're known of that white stone they build all houses and buildings and everything it's beautiful yeah. thank you and the arches yes <laughs> the the light colors white very natural colors little like antique pieces we like to collect when we go home the one nice so now we're going to add the walnut that we toasted earlier we have something Chefs, how do you come up with new dishes or how, how do you vet that out for your menu? I think it's going to put all of it. So all the menu we have, 
that's the, the food I grew up eating. And um, very traditional Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, uh, Levantine cuisine. But I add just my twist, and it's all my mom recipe, my aunt's, my you know grandmother recipes. Uh, but I like to add my you know touches, my, my twist to every dish. Yeah. I'm going to click here, all over it, so we'll put it here, some, and then we add these. Thanks, Tom. We have some uh, question here. Um, I really haven't tried uh, Mediterranean food, so what dishes would you recommend? Mm -hmm. I feel like always this is the hardest question for me. <laughs> So everything I love everything on the menu, everything. Uh, but my favorite favorite dish on the menu, uh, uh, the Palestinian uh, national dish, it's called mzakhan. Uh, we bake the bread fresh in our uh, stone uh, bread pita oven. Um, it's called tabun bread, and we add on top uh, caramelized onion with summa and olive oil, and chicken on top. And we serve it with yogurt. It's really delicious. It's very simple, but it's very like packed with flavors and it's delicious. <laughs> Any other questions so far? Yeah. Okay. Hi, um, do you have any social media or anywhere where we can find your recipes? Um, not really, but usually I post a lot on the Instagram story, like behind the scene in the kitchen. I do a lot of uh, like, yeah, videos, like stories, like while we work in the kitchen, the process. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you can find that a lot, maybe in the highlights, the Instagram. So Uh, you said you opened your restaurant from the ground up. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest part? Like, I know starting completely from scratch, it, it, everything's going to be hard, but there has to be like the thing that like drove you the craziest. I, I can hear that. <laughs> it's the contractors yeah. in the city. <laughs> uh, you, um, like, however, like budget you have, you will go above and beyond <laughs> that for sure. 100%. And you want to be like very ready for it, even even though you you think you are ready, but like uh, on, in the actual time, you feel, you feel like you burned out, like you, you you know you don't want to do it anymore. It's just so frustrating, like dealing with like small details and and every every day there's you know something new that will come up. So it's not easy. <laughs> it takes a lot of back and forth with what your vision is, mm -hmm. how it's applied, or if you can't find a certain thing you wanted. Actually, with my, just a little bit of a perfectionist, <laughs> a lot of bit of a perfectionist, which is what you do need. You need that for like a success. I'm a little bit better now. After a while, you were like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, even in the beginning, in the beginning, it's, it was, I feel like the hardest part for me when we opened the restaurant to, to find the right staff. That was like the challenge for me. I'm like um, so picky, my things in the kitchen and like, you know, like, you know, the process, the cleanliness. So it's not easy to find like, um, like the right staff, which is like, it's very important in the business, uh, in the restaurant business, because you can't do everything by yourself. It's impossible. I thought in the beginning I can, but I'm like, no way, <laughs> no way. So it's it's a blessing to have a good staff, which like I'm so grateful right now. So grateful to have like really amazing staff because uh, there's no any chef, successful chef like without great staff for sure. But it's just, it's so hard to build that relationship and like the to find all this, you know, the family, the staff you're looking for. It takes time. <laughs> it takes six <takes> years. <laughs> I 
Oh, the name. So explain that. <laughs> okay. Uh, the name, so Ama comes from Amman, which is the city we grew up in, in Jordan. And Toli is a Latin word for hills. Jordan is built on the, these seven hills. So it's kind of a mixture of the two. Wanted it to be something um, like unique. A lot of people come and think it's Italian. <laughs> They Italian, have pasta, Greek. <laughs> they think it's Italian, Greek, Turkish, yeah. or like, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I, I feel like it's nice to for somebody to expect something and then come in and it's kind of something completely different. And it's nice to explain the story to a lot of people, and it it like brings back to home, which is nice. I just want it to be unique and um, has meaning. So I grew up in Amman and has like a special place in my heart. And uh, yeah, so I came up, it took me two years to come up with the name. <laughs> I swear, because I want it to be like uh, related to Amman, but it's not like really like, you know, like, um, like very like, you know, obvious, like something from Amman, the city. So I want it to be unique. That's why. Yeah, we've, when you, when we were starting to come up with names, I don't remember any of the other ones, but. There was a yeah, I have a there. list. Like yeah, maybe it, like it's somewhere 10, 15. in there in the you know somewhere. But we just walk would walk around the house saying it out loud to see how it would sound. <laughs> so yeah. it's it, you want something that resonates with people, and you want something that is easier to say. But it's nice because a lot of people say it different ways, and they ask me like, "Oh, how do you actually say?" It? I was like, "I don't really know. I guess it's just however you want to say it." I guess. Because it's a made-up thing. So. so now we're going to add the breadcrumbs, which I know a lot of people may be gluten-free. You can find uh, gluten-free breadcrumbs and make it gluten-free way. Oh, uh, no. Maybe I can't do it. Chef, I, I, I have a question. If you have a second, me. Hi. Um, I forgive me if you've already talked about this a little bit, but I was just wondering. So you grew up loving food and making a lot of food. Tell me about your journey, like training wise, from cooking at home and to owning a now very successful restaurant with a full staff of people. Like, how has that transition been for you? Um. Yeah, it's totally different. People, they think like um, if I can host, you know, uh, friends or family like, you know, for dinner and I cook for, for example, like 14 people, I can be, you know, like opening a restaurant. <laughs> but it's totally different, different, you know, world because uh, you will be doing this dish every day. Like how many, you know, how many dish you will be doing on you know from that dish like how many quantities or it's 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 um it's different so it, it needs a lot of uh, patience and need a lot of energy and dedication so you want to be like able to to face the reality and be in that restaurant you know like 24 hours to to yeah it's 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 different <laughs> good like has it been good yes oh, yeah, no i enjoy it it's beautiful yeah mm -hmm. yeah now she I can love make it. small portions yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> everything, everything huge masa i have a question for you too so um you grew up around food a lot what made you decide to pursue it professionally um the, the restaurant yeah because i think it's always been a hobby for me and i enjoyed it a lot growing up and i was one of the staff and very very therapeutic um, and I, so I went, and I've always loved business and my undergrad, I went to fashion school, but it was also business of fashion. And then during when COVID hit, it's when I graduated. So then I was like, it's perfect timing to continue education. So I went and I did my master's at UCI and I studied business there. So my core has always been business, which is nice because I can apply it to any field in any industry. And then I've been working at Amatoli since we opened pretty much. I started as a server and then just like front of the house. And then as I um, as I 
as we grew our staff and I was able to be a little bit more in the back, which is where I enjoy it more, I started to focus more on baking and desserts. And then I came here because I wanted to get more of like a more technicality because baking is very sciencey and you need to understand everything a lot more. Uh, so that's why I came to culinary school just to I to perfect it a little more because it's always just been a hobby for me, which is not wrong. And I feel like you can learn a lot online and through experience, but it's been really nice to, to learn everything at, at school here. And now I've kind of, I have my own recipe that Anatoly on the dessert menu which has been really yeah. fun to make. Yeah, yeah. so cool. Yeah. So popular yeah. though. Yeah. I do, yeah. and I'm very grateful that I do have the opportunity to do that. Obviously, it's not something anybody can just do. So I do, you know, see how it's, uh, I feel grateful to, to be able to do that. So it's nice. And the process of creating a recipe is really fun, especially with baking, because you don't really, you don't know the final product until you're done. <laughs> So there's been a lot of mistakes and everybody gets excited because everybody gets to taste that so everything. Yeah. So that's it. That's good. Does anybody else have a question? So, Chef, tell me, you opened in 2018, mm -hmm. and now we're six years into it, and you went through the pandemic, and then you've garnered all these wonderful accolades from the Los Angeles Times, James Beard. What's that process been like for you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think I got distracted. Yeah. Could you repeat the question, please? Well, how do you how has the transition been from you know opening a brand new restaurant to getting all the accolades now that you're getting from the Los Angeles Times one hundred and one like to James a, Beard? It's a it makes me more like responsible, like more uh, more putting like more heart and effort every day and more and more and loving it more to be more successful. And I feel like it's a, it's a big responsibility on me. Like, you know, I want it to be perfect all the time. I want it to be better all the time. So I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's just uh, makes me more like, you know, uh, like loving it more. And it's, it's a big responsibility. It's really big responsibility. I feel like it also keeps you uh, creative and wanting to mm -hmm. do new things and uh, find out new ways to be better and just keep growing because it if sometimes you like get an award or recognition and then you feel like oh I it's fine like I, I got it I'm good now but it's you have to keep not proving yourself mm -hmm. but I just like making sure that everything is still good I guess yeah, it's nice yeah wonderful That's why a restaurant, I feel like, is super fun. I never thought I would end up working at a restaurant. But it's really fun because it's different every day. It's different. You get to experiment with different things you're making. You get different feedback from customers. I love feedback from customers, even if it's, like, negative or positive. It, it makes you want to, like, work harder or see, like, what, what you could do better or what people like. And it's funny because everybody decides to like the same thing on a certain day. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. But you customers, they come like literally like every, like three times a week, they eat the same dish. <laughs> That's why when you asked the question, you asked what was your favorite dish? Yeah, it's, it's hard because, or like what the most popular dish is. Some people ask that. And it's hard to, to say what the answer is because like every day people just decide to like something different, which is nice. We have and, a question and our here. menu is like, um, it's, um, it's huge. So it's, I feel like it's, um, it's nice for everyone, like vegetarian, vegan, and non-vegetarian. So it's accommodate, I think, like everyone yes. needs. Yeah, that was going to kind of be my question. Just like, how often does the menu change? And are you kind of restricted by what you have in California? Like, how different is it from the ingredients that they have um, where you're from? 
Yeah, definitely. I feel like the ingredients plays uh, a, bit, a huge um, with flavors. Um, I feel like the because of the land, especially when it comes to the meat, the red meat, I feel like there is a, a different of the taste. Even though we uh, we uh, offer in our restaurants halal uh, meat, the chicken and the beef we uh, we have in our menu, uh, but it's still I feel like it's 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 a little bit different of the taste, and uh, um, we get our all the ingredients in from the fr- farmers market. Um, not hundred percent, to be honest. <laughs> it's 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 hard because it's, we we use a lot of quantities, but uh, we try to. Um, to get a lot from, uh, I have a really good relationship with a couple of farmers market in Long Beach. Um, uh, and uh, it's really important to have like really good ingredients because it, it uh, brings out the flavors, uh, uh, the right flavors and the good flavors. <laughs> we do get our olive oil and our spices from Jordan and Palestine. Yeah, we import all the spices from Jordan. As sumac and zatar, if you're familiar with those especially, uh, are hard to find in if they're not from back home. I feel like they just make them different. But yeah. I think those are like the most the two most important ones. Yeah, I feel like in our kitchen, the, the main ingredients, um, olive oil, it plays a huge uh, role in our food. And um, suma and zatar. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with these ingredients. We use a lot. So we added the breadcrumbs and we're going to add uh, pomegranate molasses. And I forgot to mention we add also we added the um, uh, bell pepper paste. So we have the bell pepper fresh. We, we uh, roasted in uh, bell pepper paste. It gives uh, more like a to the flavors and uh, like um, nice, like earthy, tangy flavor. Wow. And then the pomegranate molasses. Anybody have any question about pomegranate molasses? <laughs> Tell us about it. It's made from pomegranate. <laughs> we use a lot of pomegranate molasses in our kitchen. So. Yeah, um, like tangy, sweet, tart, sweet. And then we're, we're going to add tahini, uh, sesame paste. Also, we use a lot of tahini in our kitchen. Of course, the main ingredients uh, for hummus. Chef, how often do you change your menu? I I don't change it. I like to keep it very traditional, but at some time um, I like to have a special dish. Um, like some like sometime during the holidays or weekends, uh, yeah. But uh, and I sometimes I like to just add like some new, for example, meze or or yeah. I I it's not like quite like a lot, but just I like to keep it very traditional and consistent. Yeah, especially the lunch and the uh, brunch. Um, I add some time on the brunch. I wish I can take off it's just so hard to remove because right. when it comes some time for me to to think of my, the my kitchen staff i i just want to make it like simple more uh more easier sometime because we're a very busy restaurant so i look to the menu i'm like oh this is so popular this is so good so i'm like no 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 i'll keep it all <laughs> so it's just um, hard i keep adding not removing yeah. or changing and uh the dinner menu is very simple also and very traditional. It's hard for the customers too. I feel like sometimes they connect with certain dishes and then right. you know them and they get upset. Right. <laughs> that happens a lot. But I do like when we do like dishes of the day. Um, we just ended Ramadan. Mm. So right after Ramadan comes Eid. 
And for Eid, we did mensef. Um, mensef is the national dish of Jordan. It's a very simple dish, but it's it's really yummy. And in Jordan, I didn't know about this till recently, but there's a restaurant in Jordan that only serves mensa, and they have a little area where you can take a nap after because <laughs> you just fall into such a big food coma after mensa. So now we're adding Aleppo pepper, which is the um, uh, very um, uh, like the main ingredient for the hamara. Aleppo pepper, it's a spice uh, from Aleppo city uh, from Syria. Is it spicy? It, it's a it's it has like the right amount of kick. It's not too spicy, and um, yeah, it just uh, adds a, a nice flavor and kick to the hummer. Wonderful. I know the pita is a very popular item yep. <laughs> restaurant that has a uh, you know a unique selling mm -hmm. proposition, which we talk about with our students because it's puffed and it comes out mm -hmm. so beautifully and it's a very popular item that adds such a nice element. How did you, um, how'd you come up with that and the presentation? So when we first opened Amatoli, it was a small restaurant in the beginning. And my dream was to have a fresh pita, but I couldn't offer it in the beginning because the kitchen wasn't big enough. And, uh, and the menushe, I don't know if, if anybody familiar with the menushe, the flat, kind of Middle Eastern flatbread kind of pizza, but we uh, we add the topping on top, uh, uh, za'atar with olive oil or cheese. We have uh, different menushe. It's very, very popular in the Middle East. Um, so my dream was to have the oven number one in my kitchen, but sadly I couldn't because <laughs> it's a tiny kitchen and I couldn't have the oven. But when we expanded, that the first thing I added to the new space, the kitchen, uh, the the oven, and uh, of course the fresh pita because it's it's it takes the whole experience, the whole uh, um, you know the meal to another level because this is the way we eat our food, like you know just you know sharing, breaking bread and dipping, you know the bread with you know dips. We have a lot of dips, so it's it's a uh, it takes the whole you know, experience to another level. So I was so happy to have the pita and the menushe. My favorite thing to eat in menushe also in the restaurant, in, the, in our menu. It's, it's really good. Fantastic. <laughs> so we actually have a question from an online viewer. Um, so is muhamara one of the most popular dishes at the restaurant? Yes. Mm -hmm. They asked how long it makes typically to make a batch of it, like during service, a batch of muhamara like this. Oh, we prepare. We prep. We oh, yeah. Prep yeah, we prep a batches. Like, for example, uh, you know, weekdays different than weekend. So we prep uh, a bat like two batches like mm -hmm. this, and it's it's uh, we let it ready for the you know the service. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much is in a batch typically? Like that you prep. How much in a batch? I mean, or how many servings? Like, how many servings do you go uh, through? How many typically? Yeah. Um, uh, a lot, I assume. A yeah. Lot. yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it depends on weekends and weekdays. Sure. Weekends would just usually double of everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's typically with everything, all the dips, we like prep them mm -hmm. and then the like, kitchen preps them and we add it on the line so that it's just easier and quicker for red, for customers to get their food. Sure. Thank you. How many covers, how many guests do you have coming in on the weekends? We can, uh, more like, yeah, about 500. 500. Wow. Because weekends, we also have brunch, which is really fun. Weekends, I call them chaos days. <laughs> They're my favorite days. My favorite, yeah. I feel like we open at 11 every day, but on Saturdays and Sundays is when we have brunch. And so it's kind of nonstop. So we have brunch from the moment we open, and then it falls into, it like, right goes to dinner. So people are just coming hungry. <laughs> they want to eat <laughs> so everybody's just like excited so it's nice and you have your beer and wine license at yes. the restaurant right we have beer and wine but we mm -hmm. don't have liquor um some people ask for it but i feel like for our food specifically we we like beer and beer and wine just um goes along with it better yeah perfect i would We're like thinking to have to mocktails. Add mocktails yeah, yeah. <laughs> Soon we're expanding the patio also, mm -hmm. and um, 
we're renovating the patio with nice uh, cover awning and so soon, hopefully it will be done soon. It's taking forever. <laughs> but yeah, yeah once we, we're the done with the patio, I'll add the like licenses and getting things passed. Yeah, it just takes so long because you like do something, submit to the city, takes them weeks to approve. They respond to you, tell you changes, you make changes, you submit again. It takes another <laughs> two or three months. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, the back and forth with everybody that has to pass things. No, not specifically with the liquor license, just like with anything you want to make changes, like with the patio, for example, because um, it's a public space. So you need, there's a lot of rules about that. Things that are allowed, things that aren't allowed. We wanted like built in heaters and fans. They said no. Every city has their own <laughs> like, regulations. Yeah. So. So you just have to see what you can do, work with the contractor, work with the city. Uh, so the I just think the hardest part is like the time, especially when we first open, because I use sometimes certain different landlords give you different um, like uh, things with the with the contract. So some will say, okay, you you don't have to start paying rent until this time. Typically, it's like when you're set to open. But you're never set. You're mm -hmm. never open when you're set yeah. to open. So then you start paying rent, and you're not getting customers, and you're just paying, paying, paying for all these things, <laughs> and you just kind of want to open so you can, you know, hire staff and make make food and everything. I, for me, I feel like that was the hardest part when you first open, just like wanting to get everything done. Everything just takes time, especially when you want it to look how you want it to be. And it's gone. It's not gonna look the way you want it to be yeah believe me <laughs> i was struggling with the small small details but um i just said to myself i'm like okay maybe i i'm the only one i'm seeing those small details they will not be noticeable which is true you want to take it easy because it's it's there's a lot of moving parts in the restaurant so How did you hire and train your front of the house staff who kind of took ownership of that? Um, front of the house staff? Yeah, I have intensive training. Uh, two weeks, sometimes it takes more. Um, it's, and it's very hard to find the, the right staff. And I feel like there, um, it's a lot of turns over right now. We have like them uh, good, like... Um, amount of uh, employees there they've been with us like five five years four years and some of them uh they just you know move to another state and so uh, we're we're always in need always always small one garnish uh, this is the way we garnish our muhammara We also love mint in our cuisine. Or I don't know if it's she just loves mint. <laughs> you know, we have, mint isn't everything. It adds like freshness and it's really nice. Yeah, a little bit of olive oil and the pomegranate seeds. The pomegranate seeds. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sean. I have a question. Um, were you guys open during COVID? Because I know a lot of restaurants went out of business. How did you guys market your restaurant? Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, Long Beach is um, it's a county um, in LA. So we... Um, most of the time we were just uh, doing delivery and, um, you know, to go orders. And um, when the city allowed only the patio, so we, we always had the patio full. But it was really challenging, tough time, but we made it. We also yeah. did um, like a little market inside. We had, because we were able to get stuff from like restaurant where we get our the rest of the restaurant stuff. 
Um, so a lot of people were having a hard time going to like grocery stores to get like, toilet paper <laughs> or just, you know, groceries. So Thank you. we, we did a, we had a little market so people can just pre-order everything and like whoever was working there would just pack it up and they can come pick it up. That was fun. Yeah. They, our customers, they loved that, that idea. So um, I had the tables that we, we have the customers on in the uh, middle of the restaurants. So I had um, all the pr produce, everything. So we used to sell everything as a market in the middle of the restaurants. So they will place their order and then they will place uh, some of like um, grocery, like, uh, uh, you know, cucumber, tomato, flour. <laughs> yeah. And they will pick it up. Thank you. I forget to mention something about the name, the Muhammara. It comes from um, uh, Ahmar, the red color, that which uh, means the 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 bell pepper, the red, the redness from the bell pepper, means red. Ahmar means so red Ahmar, red. like Muhammara, it's uh, the red color from the red pepper. <laughs> That's the Looks meaning beautiful. of Muhammara. Yep. I hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> So they're getting everything ready for a little taste for you all. Still, like, I guess just at the restaurant. Oh, sorry. Um, well, that was it. That was my question. <laughs> um, I have a lot of plans. So um, maybe there's um, like a new restaurants coming, but a different concept. So. Yep. There's and, no days off. So she's always thinking about something. Yeah. I just love That's being fun. working in the restaurants and I love being active and creating and feeding people. So it's just a passion for me. And for me, what I'd like to do when we open our little uh, room, uh, it would be fun to do like cooking classes. I think that would be nice. I feel like there's Ooh, yeah. it's really fun when you have restaurant or just like in food in general, there's so many opportunities and you can do so many different things. Um, so I think it's nice. There's a lot, you can get creative. Can be, yeah, way. very creative and have a lot of things in our restaurant business. You ask, maybe cookbook <laughs> <laughs> for the recipes. Yeah, I would love to have a cookbook one day. A lot of customers, they ask about cookbook all the time. Mm -hmm. When you open the private dining room space, um, how many will that accommodate? About 30, 30. 30. We're hoping 20, 20 to 30. Oh, that's like 30 people. Comfortably, and then, yeah, of course, you can mm -hmm. add little chairs after you pass whatever <laughs> requirements are. Masa, tell us about your experience with the pastry program here and how you transitioned into your externship. <laughs> Do I love it a lot. Um, it, I did learn a lot because my only ever restaurant experience was like working with family. Um, it has its pros and cons, obviously. They did treat me just like any other employee. I did have to always be on time and, you know, do my work <laughs> and everything. So I do appreciate that because it taught me a lot. Uh, but from the program specifically, I learned how we make things differently because um, we didn't in the program, we didn't really make anything I was familiar with, which was fun to like just try everything else. Um, and now I'm working at like Italian Californian cuisine. So that's really fun too. Uh, where I'm applying a lot of what I learned there, which is nice. And of course you learn from there, from them too. Yeah, it's been really fun. It's nice to have like other, you know, operation uh, restaurants also. <laughs> How's it been working with Nancy Silverton? She's so sweet. <laughs> she's really nice. Yeah, I saw her in the restaurant a few times. And she just, yeah, she's so nice. She's welcoming. She said hi. Um, she's like excited. It's just, I liked her energy. She's really sweet. And the pastry team is nice. The restaurant's huge, which I like. You get to meet with so many, you get to meet different people, um, see how every department works, which is nice. Yeah. And you're actually working um, in the pastry department for all three of her restaurants. Can yeah. you tell students a little bit about that? Yeah. So we do desserts for uh, Spaca and Osteria Moza and Pizzeria. And um, 
if you're working like morning shifts, you go in and you prep all for all the different desserts. And then um, if you're working the dinner shift, you're just plating the desserts for service. So it's nice to work morning shift so you can see how everything is made. And then dinner shift is nice because you see what the final product looks like. All right, everyone's getting a little sample. We have another question here. Since right now you're doing like the pastry thing, do you ever steal any recipes and like try them out? Try them out at home. You don't steal recipes. No, not like that. But like you know, just to it, play with them at home or it, do. It. I think that's why baking is so fun because you you, you can get inspired by so many different recipes. Like when I'm working on a recipe, um, like for example, I make cookies at Amatoli. We have like a tahini cookie and a date and walnut cookie. I feel like a cookie recipe is super simple, but it did take me a few times to get it, especially in like a large batch or to see what kind of cookie I want, if I want it to be like more crunchy overall or like crunchy outside, softer inside. So I feel like even for a cookie recipe, you can try different ones you like and then mix all the parts that you did like. I feel like that's the best part about baking is you can create your own with your inspiration that you get. I still can't get that done. Yeah, it's, it's, it, baking is so technical too. Mm -hmm. I feel like you mess up science. Things. That's, that's why I have her for baking. Yeah. I'm not baking. Sometimes I ask her for recipes. I know <laughs> she she would make like you know cakes and desserts growing up. So sometimes if I'm like asking her for a specific recipe, she'd be like, "Oh, one cup." And I know her cup is not like an actual measuring cup. It's like the cup we drink water from. Out. Even when I ask grandma for her recipes, so she'll tell me the recipe, but then I still have to kind of fix it myself. But it's nice. How does your family back at home in Jordan feel about the restaurant and have they come and experienced it? Oh, they love it. They're so proud. They're so happy. They're always, you know, see us on, you know, social media. They're always sometimes FaceTime. Yeah, they love it. They're so proud. My mom, she's very proud, which is like, I see her with me in the restaurant. Even she's not with me, but it's, uh, it's all her recipes. It's all her, you know, love and passion for the food, too. I'd love for them to actually come and try it. It's just hard for them to come, but I that would be really nice, especially specifically my grandma. But it's hard for her to travel. Maybe one day, right? One day. <laughs> How does it taste? Are you enjoying? <laughs> it, it, it's silent I mean, in here, so that means it's good, right? <laughs> no one allergic to walnuts. Yeah. I hope so. After only one, right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The bread, but uh, you should come and try it at the restaurants. It's different. <laughs> Especially when it comes, you know, like uh, straight out of the oven. Yeah. Yeah, it comes straight out of the oven, puffed, nice basket, <laughs> and it's pulled apart. I've had it, and it's addictive. Trust me. <laughs> Which we we have uh, for for the to go orders. Um, a pita, which we ordered from a, a bakery uh, store, uh, delivered every day. So when we first uh, start uh, uh, having the, the fresh pita an hour um, on the menu, when we expanded, all the customers, they, wanna, they want to have that fresh pita for to-go orders, which is, it's impossible. And the customers, they will be like so mad and so angry about it. And like, we, it took us like, I swear, maybe like six months, a year. Until now, we try to explain to our, you know, beloved customers yeah. that we ordered, they ordered to go food. We can't offer that pita for to go orders as well because it's not about, it's not about, you know, the pita itself. It's just about the labor because it's labor of love. Like it's, right. it's, just la it's literally like it's labor of love because I have like four to five people they make that pita every day from 9 a.m. till close to till 10 p.m. to just be able to you know accommodate our dining customers. So we can't offer both. So it's for for them. It's just so hard to understand that point. 
some some of customers they just you know they don't like it they're <laughs> just so mad about it but, but we it's... still like uh, you know give them that uh, freshly baked uh, delivered pita from a bakery store right. but not like straight from our oven but they want that pita <laughs> well, they you can to... come and enjoy it in the restaurant. Right. It's yeah. the experience of that. Yeah. You can't duplicate that in a, in a to-go process. I yeah, and, and um, the process in the kitchen, we can offer, like we can have both, you know, like for the delivery. We also can't handle it because where we make our pita, it's also where they're making desserts. So if it's busy and then there's like 10 pita orders and then they also need it for take, it's sometimes you have to think about things like that when you're running the restaurant. Um, you, the thing is you want to make all customers happy, but sometimes you have to do some sacrifices mm -hmm. in order to see what else is better for the staff. You want your staff to stay too. <laughs> you don't want yeah. them to lose. Them to work like when they're like happy, not like you know fully yeah, stressed it's out. It's, it's yeah, and you have to. It's not fun. that experience mm -hmm. for the guests that are coming yeah. in to experience that pizza fresh out of the oven. Exactly, so I understand. That. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the end, and any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with the students as they're entering into their culinary journeys. Follow your passion and, you know, love and um, dedication and, um, you know, uh, follow your dream um, and keep consistent like like you have, a, you know, a dream and just one day just say like, yeah, I, I will I will do it and you will you will do it. <laughs> Masa, anything? Um, I think this industry is not a very, uh, so I mean, I mean, a lot of industries aren't a very simple industry to, to get your start in. I think you have to put in a lot of work and time. You have to make a lot of sacrifices, especially when you're first starting out. I remember when we first opened and started out, I saw friends a lot less. I, I didn't go out much. You, you have to make those sacrifices if you want to build a business from the ground up or, you know, just if you're going to work. Uh, I didn't even see my mom sometimes <laughs> three days because she'd be at the restaurant. I'd be at school. We have to like, go to sleep and long hours, uh, open to close. Mm -hmm. you, you just you have to understand that there are sacrifices in order to see like um, true success. Mm -hmm. So I think you just have to put in your time uh, and just understand that and it's going to be hard but it'll be rewarding too yeah work hard in the beginning so it can be rewarding later mm -hmm. that's what my dad always says <laughs> work hard now so you'll be happy later well fantastic thank you both very much thank we're you so much. Much.